Hi everyone, in this episode, I want to talk about when the narcissist discards you, what leaves you open for a hoover, and when the narcissist decides that they're permanently done with you, and how they go about deciding this. So make sure you stick around for this episode. It's a good one. Your permanent discard means a blow to their ego and an injury that they absolutely cannot recover from. Narcissists can discard for multiple reasons. Usually the main reason a narcissist will discard you is because they have a new source of supply. And generally, the narcissist was actually discarding you throughout the devaluation stage before a final grand finale discard for that new supply. Narcissist will also discard you just to test you, to get an emotional reaction out of you, to get more potent narcissistic supply. A narcissist will discard you because they need a little bit more drama in their lives. They'll discard you so that you'll chase them and they can convince everyone in their lives that you're controlling, you're unstable, you're crazy, and they begin to triangulate you with people in their lives. Well, they do this to set you up prior to the final discard. That way they can always look like the victim. And meanwhile, while they're grooming another source of supply, if they're slowly discarding you during the devaluation stage, it sets the stage for everyone in their lives to see why they have to leave you for that new supply. And that's how they keep everyone on their side. Now, when the narcissist finally discards you for the new supply because they believe they're going to be better than you, the narcissist will ghost you silent treatments. They will give you zero closure. They do this on purpose so that way they can always leave a door open for a hoover to come back to you in case things do not work out with the new supply. But why did the narcissist need to discard you in the first place? Let me tell you why. First of all, the narcissist cycle of abuse is pathological. The only way for a narcissist to regulate themselves and perform for the outside world is to have someone to actively devalue. Now, while you're internalizing all of their projections and their gaslighting and begging them to please treat you better, and you're trying to repeatedly hold them accountable, and they gaslight you into believing it's your fault, and they use techniques like DARVO as well to always avoid accountability. And DARVO is an extreme form of gaslighting and blame shifting. I have a video on that. Do look up DARVO, D-A-R-V-O. And DARVO is a tactic they use to deny or deflect accountability away from them. They attack the victim's character, and then they reverse the roles of victim and offender. Now, for the longest time, these tactics worked on you. They worked on you every time you did try to hold them accountable for their, their bad behavior or their disrespect towards you. You really believed it was your fault. You internalized it. But as their mass continued to slip, more and more and their abuse got more severe the silent treatments got more severe the lying got more severe you were less likely to internalize it or you would put up a fight before you would internalize it now every time you kept holding the narcissist accountable and were refusing to internalize their lies projections and gaslighting it caused them a narcissistic injury now a narcissist absolutely cannot stand sustaining an injury because when a narcissist gets an injury at your failure to internalize their abuse and blame yourself it crashes their ego it forces them to face themselves because when you're internalizing their abuse and you believe that you know everything is your fault and they're treating you so badly because it's your fault that reinforces into their delusion that you are in fact the problem Every time you react to their abuse, it reinforces to them, oh, look, see, they are acting just as bad as me, so my behavior must be okay because their reaction is way worse than what I'm doing. This is what they tell themselves. This is what they believe. And again, they can only regulate themselves if you are internalizing their abuse, projections, gaslighting, and lies and believing that it's their fault. That is why narcissists are so calm after they verbally abuse you. Now, like I said, when you stop internalizing things, it keeps causing them injuries. Narcissists cannot stand to face reality. They believe they're perfect. You are there to reinforce their greatness. And when you stop reflecting back to them their greatness or their ability to have control over you, 
They can't deal with that. Narcissists need to have absolute control over you. And when you are not allowing them to control you, they see that as an act of defiance. You are being disobedient. And the narcissist absolutely cannot have that. Because if you are being disobedient in their mind, it reinforces to them that they may have chosen wrong. And narcissists do not choose wrong. You have to be the problem because they feel that they are flawless. They avoid all accountability. It is just easier to get rid of you and replace you than have to accept accountability. And I know that you're thinking, wow, all you have to do is say, I'm sorry, or I probably shouldn't have done that. But a narcissist will never do that. They will never accept accountability for the bad things that they have done to you. They don't care. And this, this is a whole nother episode about how, why their, your love cannot change them. Your love cannot fix them. A narcissist is an after love. They're after your loyalty. They're after your obedience. They need control over you. Now, if your love causes you to be loyal and obedient, well, okay, but they don't care about the love. They care about the loyalty and the obedience. So when a narcissist discards you, it's because you're not giving them the potent fuel that you used to. You used to <clears throat> react to everything they said and did. You internalized everything without continuing to try to hold them accountable. No matter how far their mask slipped, they were able to future fake you into believing that they would get better and return to the person they were during the love bombing phase. And as long as you were holding on to that hope, they could continue to get supply from you. But the moment you stop doing that and you're like, okay, you know what? Look, I'm going to put up a fight because I know I'm not crazy. I know that you're doing bad stuff to me. And it's just, it gets to be too much. It gets to be too much to the point where you either keep holding them accountable and refusing to internalize their projections, giving them constant injuries, or you're no longer reacting and playing along the way they need you to. So they have to discard you for those reasons because you're causing them constant narcissistic injuries. Their ego cannot withstand those injuries or your fuel isn't potent enough anymore and you have to be replaced. A narcissist has to maintain a certain level of acceptance to the outside world. They have to always remain the victim. So that is why the narcissist devalues you and triangulates you with people in their lives. So that way, when, they get to, when it gets time to discard you or they cheat on you and replace you with somebody else, the outside world believes they absolutely had to because nothing they could do was going to you know, help this relationship and it's all your fault. They always have to be the victim because they will never accept accountability for anything that went wrong in the relationship. Now, a narcissist will discard you multiple times throughout the devaluation stage. They may openly do it by saying things like, I'm done with you, or they will give you the silent treatment for no reason other than to do it and be disrespectful as a way to regain more control over you. Maybe you cause them an injury and now they need to punish you for your disobedience. Maybe you tried to speak up about their abuse. That means you broke their loyalty, so now they have to punish you. You could live in the same house with the narcissist, and they will still discard you. They will not acknowledge you, give you silent treatments for days, weeks, months. They won't invite you places. Just any level of low disrespect that they can throw at you to try to punish you and hurt you back for causing them an injury, all because... You just wanted to hold them accountable for something they did to you. You just wanted to say, hey, why did you do that? A narcissist, they can't do that. They can't do that. In fact, a lot of times you have to tell a narcissist to apologize. Like, you know, you need to apologize. But you have to understand, they know what they did to you was bad. They know. They just don't care. They're not there to care about you. You are there to be of service to them. And when you stop being of service, you have to go. You need to be replaced. Now, the reason they don't give you closure, as I said earlier, is so in case things do not work out with the new supply, they can come back and hoover you. They need to keep a harem of people constantly circulating around them so that they always have a steady source of supply. Whether that's, it's usually exes, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, ex-husbands, ex-boyfriends, all of that. They have to keep a harem of people, of exes around them 
so that if something doesn't work out with the new supply, you reject a Hoover, they have to have somebody to go back to to devalue you in order to regulate their emotions. Their cycle is pathological. They constantly have to be devaluing someone in order to regulate their emotions. Even during love bombing, they're devaluing you. They're giving you a little series of tests to groom you to see, you know, how obedient and loyal you can be, you know, for a relationship so they can harvest supply out of you. And the act of the love bombing itself is fake. They're mirroring back at you. That in itself is devaluation. That in itself is a lie. And they know this, you know, but they really think that you're going to be the person that's going to fill that role, that's going to fix all them boo-boos. And you are expected to be perfect and play that role perfectly. And when you fail them, first of all, when they see you as a failure because you have failed them in some way, it triggers an injury because, again, they don't believe that they fail at anything. They don't believe that they could ever do any wrong. So when you fail them, that triggers that maybe they picked wrong. So they reframe the narrative and begin gaslighting you to make it seem like you lied to them about who you were, which is a projection because they lied about who they were to you. But they need you, they need to convince themselves that you tricked them. You tricked them into that relationship. You made them believe that you were going to be perfect for them. You were going to come in there and you were going to be their new mom. You were going to be their new father, their playmate, their admirer, and you were going to serve all their needs without flaw or deficit. And when you fail to do so because of their abuse and their terrible, terrible behavior, that gives them an injury, which then triggers their primitive, immature ego defense mechanisms, causing them to attack you for that injury in which they reframe the narrative to convince themselves that you tricked them into being with you, that you were the liar from the beginning. And it's, you know, so hard for people to wrap their head around because no normal person, and I use the word normal loosely because what's normal? But this is a highly disordered way of thinking. That is why people can't wrap their heads around it. That's why people who come out of these relationships going, what just happened? It takes years and years of research and knowledge and listening to other people's stories because it is such a disordered way of thinking that you can't wrap your head around it. Just when you think you figured out what's going on, you're like, oh man, <laughs> what the heck was that? You learn something new. And as time goes on, you're able to look back over the relationship and go, you know, you have light bulb moments. You have aha moments when you're like, dang. That's why they acted that way. That's why they did that. You know, it just, it's really, it's a lot. And when it comes to the, back to the discard, when it comes to the discard, a narcissist will also treat you extremely badly so that you will discard them. And that is a reverse discard. They've actually already discarded you because they're treating you so bad, but they need you to initiate the final breakup and this, again, is so they can look like the victim to everybody else. They can go back to everybody and say, oh, so-and-so left me, so-and-so broke up with me, and, you know, play the boo-hoo sob story to make it seem like you broke their heart when in reality they were abusing you so bad and pushing you, pushing you, and they were too coward to discard you. So they needed you to do it. And again, it's usually because they've been grooming another source of supply. Now... A narcissist will only come back after the discard and hoover you. They'll hoover you if things don't work out with the new supply. They will hoover you when they begin devaluing the new supply. They will hoover you even if their relationship is fine because they need to, main, again, their cycle is pathological. So if you get hoovered from a narcissist or they have some secret affair with you while they're with the new supply... They have to do that because they need you to remain in the devaluation phase to internalize their abuse in order for them to regulate themselves. A narcissist can only stay in the love bombing phase for as long as they have someone else to devalue. A narcissist cannot stay in the, or the love bombing phase for very long if they don't have another person to actively devalue. So if there isn't an ex willing to play their games or there isn't somebody else willing to be a side supply... 
the narcissist cannot maintain their mask in the love bombing phase in another relationship for very long, maybe max a month, two months. But, you know, those, their mask will start to slip and show their true colors. And that's usually about the time they start hoovering people in their harem or from their past in order to devalue them, you know, to regulate their emotions so they can keep their mask up in their new current relationship. Now, if they don't have anyone to play along and they don't have anyone to regulate their emotions, that new supply and that new relationship will start getting devalued almost instantly as soon as there's no one else to help regulate the narcissist. Now, when the narcissist has decided they're permanently done with you, there's really only a few reasons why. Well, a couple main reasons, and that is because, number one, you have figured them out. Once you have figured them out and you see them for who they really are, as a matter of fact, I encourage you <laughs> to always remember that you have seen them for who they really are. And when it's reached that point, you become a liability to the narcissist. They can't stand it because every time they interact with you, every time they see you, you are a constant reminder that they, they were frauds that you know who they are and what they are and you have figured out their cycle and you refuse to internalize what's going on. I'm not saying you're not hurt and you're probably still trauma bonded, but you're aware. You're aware that they are putting on a show. You are aware of what they're doing and you've caught on to their cycle and their nonsense and you will always hold them accountable and a narcissist can't stand being held accountable. Even if you're still internalizing it, they don't want to hear it. They'll say things to you like, if all you're going to do is complain, which is a form of stonewalling. That's how they shut you down and gaslight you into believing you're complaining when you're just trying to hold them accountable. But to them, you are complaining. You are bothering them. You are being a burden because you are only there to provide services to them. You are supposed to be loyal and obedient and play along as they say. So that is a big reason. That is one way you will know a narcissist is done with you because people often wonder, why didn't I get a Hoover? Honey, you didn't get a Hoover because you figured them out. You didn't get a Hoover because your boundaries and your self-esteem were too strong and high. Narcissists only Hoover or keep the door open for you if you're clueless and you don't know what's going on. You know, if you haven't been out there healing and doing the research, they know they can come back to you anytime. And they know that because you'll be, you've been sitting there waiting for, the, for their return. You've been sitting there waiting for their validation and hope that they'll be back and, and tell you why they did what they did. As a matter of fact, they need you to const, they need everyone that they've been with to stay in the devaluation phase. That way they can always come back. However, when they realize that you're not going to stay in the devaluation phase, when you're going to take what they did to you and go, huh, you know what, I'm about to figure this nonsense out because I know, oh, I know, I don't care how many friends or how many family members or how many people you have rallied up against me and made people believe that I'm the abuser and you're some innocent victim. When they know you refuse to accept that, oh no, they're not going to come back. No, because like I said, that's a constant injury to their ego and they cannot handle that. You become a constant reminder that they are a failure and you have figured them out. You know, and a narcissist can't stand the truth. They cannot face themselves. So understand that when you don't get a Hoover, it's because literally you won. You beat them. You beat them at their own game and you don't even realize what you were doing because it wasn't a game to you. But it's always a game to a narcissist. They're always out to win. You thought you were in a relationship. You were giving the best of yourself and everything you had. And they were playing a game the entire time. So in their head, they feel defeated. Their ego has, has sustained an injury that they cannot stand. And so they have to punish you. See, again, disordered way of thinking. They have to punish you by saying, I am permanently done with you because you have figured me out and caused me an injury and now I'm going to act like a seven-year-old and punish you instead of having accountability or feeling remorse because they believe they're flawless and perfect and could not possibly do any wrong and how dare you suggest otherwise. So that is how you know. When a narcissist is permanently done with you, because 
they, they will, they will go radio. I mean, when I say silent and they will try to move on to somebody as quickly as possible. And it's really quite interesting because with a narcissist, you know, they cannot be alone for very long. They go from relationship to relationship to relationship, repeating the same cycles over and over. They never take a significant amount of time alone to sit down and self-reflect because self-reflection is something that they cannot do because they lack self-awareness. And, you know, I have debated about this self-awareness thing for quite some time because they are delusional. However, they're self-aware enough to know how to put on a show. <laughs> so they do have some level of awareness. So it's something that you can just sense. There are signs they will give you. You know, they will, they will go significant amounts of time. And they know, they know you're not coming back. They know you're never going to come back because you have seen them for who they truly are. And once a narcissist knows you have seen them for who they truly are, that's a permanent discard for you right there. Otherwise, if you have never let on to hint to a narcissist that you see them for who they are and you know what is going on, <laughs> you know, they will always, oh, the final discard is always up to you. Actually, the final discard is always up to you. However, when you've let a narcissist know that you have figured them out and you've caught on to the games and you've caught on to the nonsense and you're doing the research and you're doing the work on yourself to know that, man, I'm not going to chase you. Man, I'm not going to beg you because now you're like, no, no, I'm going to get my self-esteem back and I'm going to have some respect for myself to not put up with this nonsense because you realize it's a cycle and they're doing things intentionally to hurt you, to get a reaction out of you to be able to control you, to keep you in a stage of devaluation forever, waiting on them to become the person that they once were in the beginning, which was never even real to begin with. It was something that they had to do. A narcissist has to mirror you during the love bombing phase. They have to pretend to be just like you because they know that if they were to be their authentic selves, you would reject them because, well, you know, once their mask slipped and you saw their authentic self, you were like, mm -mm, I don't want that anymore. Take that one back because it's quite frightening. It is quite frightening to think you know someone and then one day just boom, you know, they're a completely different person. So that's how you know when a narcissist is permanently done with you because you've let them know. You've let them know, look, sweetie, I know what's going on here. And I see you for who you really are. You may have everyone else fooled, but you don't have me fooled. And that will scare a narcissist away forever. You know, and, and quite honestly, guys, that is the best thing. You deserve so much better. And you realize that no matter what they do, and it's it becomes kind of interesting you know, even after they discard you and you can be heartbroken and you can be trauma bonded, but because you're aware of what they're doing and what's going on and you know that they run on this cycle, you can sit back with a bag of imaginary popcorn and just watch everything play out because you know that the cycle is going to repeat over and over and over and they'll just keep switching people. Instead of having accountability, they'll just get a new person. They'll get a new person. And they'll, they'll do anything they can to try to punish you for figuring them out, for seeing them who they really are. Because a narcissist doesn't want anybody to see them for who they really are. So remember that. Remember the power you have in figuring them out. Knowledge truly is power. And when you figure that out and scare that narcissist away, man, I'm telling you, that is when your life gets good. Because now, now you are no longer trapped inside of that bottle. You are on the outside. You can read the warning label and you're like, oh, okay. And your life will improve significantly. It's going to take some time to heal and detox from the trauma bond. But once, you know, the fog has lifted, it literally, you sit there and you just, <laughs> you think, oh my goodness. Because you'll watch this cycle play out over and over with people over and over and they'll just keep repeating the cycle whether they got a relationship that lasts two months six months whether they get married you are fully aware that they're doing the exact same thing to that person that they did to you 
There is one compelling thing about how a narcissist gauges their abuse. They abuse all their intimate partners, but there are different levels that, you know, the more that you kind of push back on the narcissist and the more that you show them empathy, kindness, and love, that bothers them because they are incapable of those emotions. They never learned those skills or those emotions. So when they're dating someone who's not as empathetic, not as kind, who might be, you know, sociopathic or narcissistic just like them, they're not going to devalue them as hard because they can't get that same reaction that they got out of somebody who was highly empathetic and caring. You know, the more empathetic you are and the more you internalize their abuse, the, the more potent your fuel, the bigger the reaction they get out of you. So they will abuse you more than they might abuse somebody else who, you know, doesn't have as much empathy because they're not going to get that level of potency out of that person. And that's how they, but you know, they like that because that makes the situation more toxic. So this video was way longer than I expected, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it's a great topic to talk about. I'll have to make another video about discarding and how you know when they're permanently done with you when in reality, you're just permanently done with them and they know that, but they have to make it seem like they were done with you because that's the only way that their ego can handle the fact that you have figured them out. Because once you've figured them out, they know. They know you're going to go move on. They know you're going to go find somebody else. So they have to flip the narrative like they always do into their favor to punish you for figuring them out, to protect their ego. And they're going to show you by moving on to probably God knows how many people or doing whatever that, you know, they do. H narcissist is similar but different at the same time you know how your narcissist likes to just try to get one in on you and make you feel some type of way but once they know you figure them out they know there's nothing they can do to make you feel any type of way other than grab a bag of popcorn and relax so have a good night guys thank you for listening stay strong stay safe and keep getting the knowledge you are all going to be amazing